Hello, we're going to learn about surface area of prisms and cylinders today. Quick review on what surface area is. It's the area of the surface, of course. Um, another way to think of the surface area is like if you're wrapping a present or painting a solid. It's not what's filling it up from the inside out. That's volume. The surface is just the, how much it takes to cover that solid, how much is on the outside. Um, in the way of a picture, it'd be pretty much everything green here. Again, this, this cylinder is not filled up. It's just the color on the outside. All right, so just how much green surface area there is. Um, when you're calculating the surface area, there's two basic methods. One is to use an equation, and two is to draw a net. Um, I'm going to show you how to draw a net, and then I'm going to show you how to use an equation. Equations work a little bit easier. Um, they're a little bit more consistent. So I'll show you how to solve one using an equation. But first, looking at the net helps us to understand the equation. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. This is a rectangular prism. We call this the base on this side and that side. A base is just on one shape that remains consistent throughout. So this here, if it was like a little rectangle here, and if we kind of went throughout the entire inside. Every time we were to cut this shape, it would have exactly, or cut this solid, I'm sorry, it would have the same exact shape throughout. So that's going to be our base. We put our base off to the side. And then all the other pieces, we just kind of unwind them into this long, rather larger rectangle. All right? We do the same thing for every single prism. Here's a triangular prism. So I take the base, that's the triangle. Remember, I could slice this down the middle, and it would still be a triangle. So that's the base, is the actual triangle. So I'll put that on both sides, and then unroll this side and the underside there and this back side. Just unroll all of that into one larger rectangle. All right. Same exact thing with a cylinder. The area of the base, the base, I'm sorry, is the circle. So we have that on there and there. And then you would just take this and roll it out, and it would be another rectangle. Okay. Now the thing with these rectangles is that the length of the rectangle is the same as the perimeter of your base. And that's the case in all three shapes. See this one here? Our perimeter of our base is the same as the length of this rectangle. All right. This one here, the perimeter of this base is the length of this rectangle. And that's always going to be the case. So that helps us when we're putting together our equation. Some other parts is that, here's a great example, the height of this cylinder is the width of this rectangle. Again, that's an important thing that you'll see in just a second when we're putting together the equation. So the net is shown there. Um, Here's the equation. This is method number two. Our equation can be written in one of two ways. The two times the area of the base, B stands for the area of the base, plus the lateral area, or the lateral surface area. The lateral surface area is the area that stands upright. Essentially, that is that the rectangle in all of those shapes that we pulled apart. So here is an equation that will actually be a little bit more helpful for us. 2 times the area of the base plus the perimeter of the base times the height. And that perimeter of the base times the height, again, that's just finding this larger rectangle. We said that it was the perimeter of the base, and the height is the other side. So that's just doing length times width, finding the area of this rectangle. And every solid um, that's a prism like this, triangular prism, cylinder, cone, or not cone, a cylinder, rectangular prism, all of those prisms will use the same equation. Now, for me, the challenge is that every single prism, the base can be a different shape. You could have a rhombus, a parallelogram. You could have a, um, I don't know, a trapezoid rectangle, triangle, circle, that would be a cylinder. Um, all of those prisms have a different base shape. So I can't possibly show you all the different examples, but I'll give you a couple of equations that are pretty common. The area of a triangle, which would be a triangular prism, 
that would be one half of the base times the height. That's the area of the triangle. And the hardest one for me is a cylinder. The area of a circle is pi r squared. So that one would be for the area of the base. And then this, you would need to find the circumference. And that's going to be the perimeter of your base. And that's 2 pi r or pi times the diameter. All right, because 2 times the radius is equal to the diameter. So you can write that in both ways. Um, and because cylinder is the one that I think is the hardest, I'm actually going to solve a question with a cylinder. That'll be the only sample question that I do. Um, and it's just follow that basic pattern for any surface area of a solid. So here's my equation. Surface area of a solid is 2 times the base plus the perimeter times the height. I'm going to stick in the equations. The area of the base is pi r squared because it's a circle. If it was a triangle, I'd use the triangle equation. If it was a rectangle or trapezoid or whatever, that's the equation for the area of the base. The perimeter, in this case, is a circumference because that's a circle. So that's pi d, pi times the diameter. All right, now I'm going to plug in some values here. I know that my radius is 1. That's my radius there is 1. And therefore, my diameter is 2. So radius is 1, diameter is 2, my height is 5. So I can plug in all of those parts. Now I'm just going to multiply. 2 times 5 is 10. 1 squared is 1 times 1, and that's 1, times 2 is 2. So I end up with 2 pi plus 10 pi. When I add those together, I had two tens, or I had two pies. I added ten more pies. Now I have twelve pies. And because we're talking surface area, we're going to be in feet squared. Or square feet is actually the way we say it, but this is the way we write it as feet with the little squared up there. All right. So twelve pi square feet, and that is the exact surface area. If we wanted an approximate surface area, we could use the number three point one four. Multiply 12 times 3.14. When I'm doing that, I always just grab my calculator because it's a whole lot easier than trying to multiply that out. So 12 times 3.14 will give you 37.68 square feet. And that will give you the surface area of this cylinder. Again, a quick recap. Um, you've got your equation right there. 2 times the base plus the lateral area. And that's what you need to do in each um, prism, you're going to be finding the area of different um, polygons and shapes. Um, so I can't show you all of them, but in each one you'll follow that same pattern. Find the area of the base and then the lateral surface area, which is the, the perimeter of the base times the height.